the last 10 days or to two weeks more or less has turned our lives upside down and we've been communicating via Zoom, via email, online, etc., trying to work on the newsletter. How has life been with you the last few weeks, especially as it relates to Hovland New School students? Uh, it's been uh, very um, interesting, overwhelming, challenging, exciting. There's been a lot of emotions. Um, it's it's also sad because uh, I do miss the students. I miss going to school every day and they also miss it. I've asked them uh, from the second or third day, I asked them how they feel and they said they miss school. They want to be in school uh, as much as we think they don't like going to school. And I think they're realizing now that they, they do want to be in school with their friends and their teachers. It's been very challenging for a lot of teachers because you know a lot of technology is being used right now. Um, teaching online is not an easy task. It's uh, a lot of training is needed, but um, miraculously we actually did it within 24 hours with no loss in education. So um, I do uh, praise all the teachers, all the students and all the parents uh, for the work that's been put into ensuring that our students continue their education. I'm sure it's exciting. I'm sure many of the teachers are learning new technologies, computer workshops, apps, which they've never tried before. In mm -hmm. fact, now we are connecting via Zoom as we are uh, trying to reach the community and discuss how we feel about the many developments within the community. Last time I saw the newsletter, so many programs were canceled, postponed, canceled, canceled, canceled. I'm sure everybody understands the situation and we'll just have to see, especially the, this time of year, March to June are the, is the period when many, many activities take place in the community. And to yeah. find one after the other being canceled or postponed, it's really, really sad and very difficult to uh, understand the, the frustration of the many committee members who work so hard to prepare for these things. Many, many organizations spend months preparing for these and now we have uh, to cancel it. As you know, the church is also, the church is doing an amazing job. Many of the priests are video recording their badarak, their sermons, and uh, they are trying to be in touch with the faithful. Even though the churches are empty, nobody's going to church, and yet there is a major effort. So it is commendable, whether it is the diocese, the prelacies, the AMAA, or even APO, the Doctors Association, they're trying to be in touch with us. So there is a lot of life within the community, and yet we are separated, isolated, and uh, socially detached, as you very well know. And this is another dimension to the life which we'll be uh, pursuing after everything is calmed down. After 9-11, you know our lives changed. This is another 9-11-like um, uh, sad uh, uh, episode in the history of mankind where we will be changing to adjust to new uh, lifestyles. Nowadays, as you were t telling me, there's virtual hello to the kids, virtual hugs. Everything is virtual. I'm talking to you in virtual reality. But it's kind of fun and hopefully we'll survive this one. Well, I think the positive thing uh, of all this is that if this happened maybe even 10 years ago, we wouldn't have the uh, ability to communicate the way we do today. So in a way, it's our lives are easier okay. because we have all of this Zoom and Google Meets and uh, FaceTime and all of this that we're able to keep in touch with everybody it, besides just calling by phone. We're seeing each other. Families are communicating across the world. So um, I guess we have to be grateful for that. That's a very, very true. And I agree with you 100%. Also, just another dimension is medicine, how we have improved in medicine, medicine technology, the research that is being conducted. In the good old days, when you read history, there are different uh, plagues or viruses spread out throughout the world, and millions and millions have died before because we were not equipped to handle this type of uh, an invisible enemy. Each and every night, I'm sure you watch the uh, press briefing of the president and his task force, and we, in fact, we know each and every one of them, from the vice president to Fauci to uh, Roberts, and, and it's, it's like part of a life. Every day we have to hear what's new, and sometimes you hear good things, sometimes you hear bad things, and it's a roller coaster, really. These are waves we go by, and it's not so easy for many people who are asked to stay at home 
distance, uh, socially detached, etc. So it's an it's a, it's a completely different lifestyle we're leading, and yet we try to be in touch with the community, especially when is the newsletter coming out? Um, it looks like it's going to come out tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so that's actually you know one thing that's going to remain a constant in everyone's lives. Um, <laughs> since we do that from home. So that's not changing. The newsletter will keep going out every week. You know, the newsletter also, uh, when I say good old days, I was about to say good old days, but in most instances, it was Armenian related stories we would uh, disseminate. And now there, there, there is not too much stories out there except coronavirus. Every place you turn to, whether it's Armenia, whether it's Gharapal, whether wherever you go, Turkey, the neighboring countries, Iran, Italy, Spain, we all know the, 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 the statistics in these countries, but there is no news and each and every one of us is trying to alert the, their friends and family members of how to stay safe. And I think that's very noble uh, with many, many of our friends who tell us uh, to clean hands, to, to be detached socially or whatever hints they have and how to fight this virus, which is, as many of us uh, know, is invisible. Today I went to uh, Whole Foods uh, many of the shelves were empty. I tried to go into Tracy's Joe. That place was closed. And ShopRite, there are many, many things missing on the shelves. We tried to do it with, with a basic. And I'm sure every Armenian family, we so much have so much plenty of food, we could survive at least a month or two with yes. the Armenian bulhor and the pilav and yes. the hunters and the lahmacun. So that, how is that food in your house? It's fine. The only thing I'm complaining about is we keep running out of fruit because we love fruit and there's four of us. So it's like if we're each eating, you know, all that fruit every day, it's, we're running out very quickly. But besides that, you know, I can't complain. As long as we're healthy, really, we, none of us are going hungry. Uh, all we want to, we just want to stay healthy. We're trying to keep our distance. We're not leaving the house. Uh, we just went for a walk, um, you know, and we're making sure we're not close to anybody. But other than that, you know, we're all home and trying to stay healthy. You know, it's interesting that all this is happening during Lent. And Lent is basically a period in the Christian life where they tell us to slow down, to take time out for ourselves, to think of the friends and pray and do good work. It's very fascinating that this is during Lent. And now we are all preparing for Easter. And many of, many of us have questions, you know, even though the president wants us to go back to work by Easter, I don't know if we will be having the Badarak as we know it, the joy celebration of resurrection in the Armenian church, which is a very um, a major ingredient in the life of Christian families, especially Armenians. So let us see and hope and pray that we will greet Easter. We will get to see our friends, all of them healthy, hopefully, and, uh, and uh, you know, lead a normal life. I would like to come back to one thing which is very, very unusual. There are elections that were to be held in Armenia, and uh, Nikol Pashinyan canceled uh, the elections. But in Gharapal, out of all the places in the world, there, uh, there are elections to be held on, I believe, in March the 31st. And uh, the candidates are Masis Mailian, and he is running against Araik Harutunian and uh, Vitali Balasanian. These three are conducting the election. What I'm trying to stress is either they're not afraid of the coronavirus or the the situation is so uptight, they don't want to give up the date for the election, want to replace Bako Sahagyan as the president of Gharapakh. That's a very important news in the Armenian community. I also hear from overseas, especially in Jerusalem, where we have family and relatives and friends. The, all the churches are closed. There are no morning services. There are no evening services. Only on Sundays, only on Sundays, especially during Lent with all the prayers taking place, only on Sundays do they have some badarak. And uh, the Holy Sepulchre and the Church of Nativity, which is run by the three major Christian denominations, the Armenian, Greeks, and Catholics, that place is still open for tourists. But there are no tourists anywhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Also, very last thing, which I have to vent out, because I want to share my frustration with all the listeners who will be sharing this video, is the financial crisis we're in, the financial burden, the financial insecurity we go through. Anybody who knows anything about 401k, I think I, one of my friends said it's no longer 401, it's 301. And in my case, it's 201, maybe 101k. <laughs> Very soon, I'll come and live with you and have some fruits at your house. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know what to say, but I you're de- always welcome, Vartan. <laughs> I de- I definitely miss Sundays. I uh, you know for 41 years we've been doing this, going to the radio on Sundays. I have to say the volunteers are really excited. They want to go back to uh, the serving the community via the radio. We'd like to say I to Jersey Hagagan Radio Jamne, and at the very end with a party after Shabbat, Yev Gusam Meredelak. But it's a uh, uh, I, I really hope and pray that each and every person I know is in good health, is safe, will come out of this isolation, and will greet each other, respecting and loving, and uh, working together in a more friendly and uh, pr- productive way in a, in a very, very new future. I don't know about hugging, though, because I feel like that's going to take a long time. <laughs> it, a lot, it, a well, lot is going to change. There are different ways of hugging, whether it's by elbow, whether it's virtual yeah. hugging. Yeah, speaking about virtual hugging, one of our relatives had uh, to graduate from university. She was getting a master's degree. And uh, the whole graduation, we were invited to the graduation. It was via Zoom. And we participated with many, many other family members and relatives and friends. And we watched the graduation from different parts of the world. And it was a virtual graduation. I've never seen it before. Amazing. And it it was just uh, uh, more than amazing. But it's something we'll have to learn to live with. And thank you, Talin. I know uh, let me also say that you've been very helpful in uh, help us to get onto Zoom because you do it every day. When I send an email, I said, who knows Zoom? You say, I live with it. I do this every day and I know all the tricks and all the buttons. But we'll be improving and hopefully keeping in touch. Yeah, that's how we're teaching every day. Anything else you would like to tell the listeners? You know, it's funny because even Lori's dance class or ballet class is being done by Zoom too. So all everybody is using Zoom now and, um, you know, they're, they're offering it for free to everyone during this crisis. Um, and that's another, another nice thing is every, Every organization is trying to help, and uh, gyms are giving online classes for free, and all these education sites are giving us resources for free. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's the one good thing that's coming out of this is everybody's trying to help each other. So, the very last thing last night, as we were practicing on Zoom, we had the radio, not all of them, oh, maybe eight, nine great. of us were in the, in the oh, session, and it was very interesting wondering. to hear each one come up with ideas and plan for the future, maybe utilize new technology also to be in touch with the community as we have been doing for so long. Talin, thank you very much. I miss the community. Do you miss the community? I miss the community and I miss you, Vartan. And I miss the newsletter. Tomorrow, what time will we have it? We'll have it tomorrow by six, hopefully. By six. I hold you to it. Yes. Thanks very much, Polorit Labakum Machtankner. Thank you, Vartan. Uh,